Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 13 of the course on statistics and probability. Students, aap yaad hoga ke pichle lecture mein maine aapke saath kuch bahut interesting aur important concepts discuss kiye the. In particular, you will remember the Chebyshev's inequality which gives you a certain minimum proportion of your data lying between specified intervals. Also, you will remember the empirical rule which is valid in case of unimodal hump shaped approximately symmetric distributions. Also, towards the end of the last lecture, I discussed with you the five number summary. Today, I will discuss with you another interesting concept which is the box and whisker plot and it is directly associated with the five number summary. Lekin peshtar iske ke mein box and whisker plot ki discussion start karu, I would like to revise with you the concept of the five number summary. Aapko yaad hoga ke maine aap se ye kaha tha ke for any data set when we have acquired information regarding the central tendency, the dispersion and the shape of the distribution, we would like to um, identify and describe all these major characteristics of the data in a summarized format and the five summa uh, number summary is a useful device for this purpose. As you now see on the screen, a five number summary for any data set consists of the five quantities x0, q1, median, q3 and xm. Aye, zara uski jo interpretation hai uski revision karte hain. As I told you last time, for a perfectly symmetrical distribution, the distance between q1 and x tilde is exactly the same as the distance between x tilde and q3 and you can now see this on the screen. Also for an absolutely symmetric distribution, the distance between x0 and q1 is exactly the same as the distance between q3 and xm. Another important point is that the arithmetic mean, the median, the mid range and the mid quartile range, they are all equal to the central point of our distribution. Ye to thi symmetric situation and what is the situation in the case of a positively skewed distribution? As you can see on the screen, in this situation, the distance between xm and q3 is greater than the distance between x0 and q1. Also, in the case of a right skewed distribution, the median is less than the mid quartile range and the mid quartile range is less than the mid range. Students, Aapne pichle lecture mein bhi aur aaj ke lecture mein bhi note kiya hoga ke I am using the word right skewed distribution for the positively skewed distribution and I use the term left skewed distribution for the negatively skewed distribution. Main jab is tarah se kehti hu to mera matlab yehi hota hai ke jis uh, agar right skewed distribution keh rahi hu तो इसका मतलब है कि जो राइट साइड वाली टेल है दैट इज लॉन्गर देन द अदर टेल इन द केस ऑफ द लेफ्ट स्क्यूड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन x0 एंड q1 एक्सीड्स द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन q3 एंड xm एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन आल्सो इन लेफ्ट स्क्यूड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशंस द मिड रेंज is less than the mid quartile range and the mid quartile range is less than the median. 
स्टूडेंट्स ये सारी बातें जो मैंने आपके साथ पिछली मरतबा भी की थी और आज रिपीट की हैं दीज आर रिफ्लेक्टेड इन द फाइव नंबर समरी यू विल रिमेंबर दैट इन द लास्ट लेक्चर आई अप्लाइड दीज कॉन्सेप्ट टू एन एग्जाम्पल एंड आई विल रिवाइज इट विद यू नाउ एज यू सी ऑन द स्क्रीन इफ वी हैव डेटा रिगार्डिंग द एनुअल कॉस्ट इनकर्ड बाई स्टूडेंट्स अटेंडिंग पब्लिक वर्सेज प्राइवेट कॉलेजेस एंड यूनिवर्सिटीज इफ वी हैव डेटा रिगार्डिंग द एनुअल कॉस्ट इनकर्ड बाई स्टूडेंट्स अटेंडिंग पब्लिक वर्सेज प्राइवेट कॉलेजेस एंड यूनिवर्सिटीज in the united states of america and in particular supposing that our sample consists of 10 universities whose athletic programs are members of the big 10 conference and the annual costs incurred for tuition fee room and board at the 10 schools belonging to big 10 conference are given as follows for the indiana university 15.6000 dollars and for the michigan state 17.0000 dollars and so on jaisa ki maine pichli martaba kaha tha agar is data se hum five number summary develop karna chahe to the first step would be to arrange the data in ascending order and as you now see on the screen the ordered array for this particular data set is 13.0 14.3 14.9 and so on and the last value is 23.1000 dollars the first advantage of the ordered array is that we are able to locate x not the smallest value and xm the largest very easily also the ordered array enables us to compute the median the first quartile and the third quartile and for this particular data set the median comes out to be 15.30000 dollars q1 is equal to 14.90000 dollars and q3 comes out to be 16.40000 dollars therefore the five number summary for this particular data set is 13.0 14.9 15.3 14.9 14.9 and 23.1 these five numbers reflecting x not q1 x tilde q3 and xm in that order or agar hum is five number summary ko is data ki shape aur iske salient features ko samajhne ke liye istemal karna chahe to according to the rules that i gave you earlier you you will agree with me that the distribution of the annual cost data is positively skewed i have come to this conclusion because of two reasons number 1 the distance from q3 to xm that is 6.7 greatly exceeds the distance from x not to q1 that is 1.9 and the second point that if we compare the median which is 15.3 and the mid quartile range which is 15.65 for this particular data set and the mid range which is 18.05 we observe that the median is less than the mid quartile range and the mid quartile range is less than the mid range so jaisa ki maine last time kaha tha sari discussion ka lubbe lubab ye ke the five number summary is a simple 
yet effective way of describing the salient features of your data set and also to determine the direction of skewness without actually have to having to draw the histogram or the frequency polygon of your distribution. Students, many aapke saath five number summary ka concept jo humne last time kiya tha, aaj puri detail ke saath dobara revise kiya aur iski wajah ye hai ke jo iske foreign baad next concept mein aapke saath discuss karne lagi hoon that is directly linked with the five number summary. This next concept as I said earlier it is a very interesting diagram actually and it is called the box and whisker plot. As you now see on the screen in its simplest form a box and whisker plot provides a graphical representation of the data through its five number summary. The plot consists of a box which is partitioned inside by a vertical line and also the plot contains two horizontal lines one on the left side and one on the right and these are called whiskers. So the box and the whiskers together constitute the box and whisker plot. Ab sawal ye paida hota hai ke ye jo box hai iska size kya hoga jo whiskers hain unki lambai kya hogi aur kis tarah se aap isko plot karenge. So I will answer this question step by step. The first step as you now see on the screen is that the variable of interest that is the x variable it is represented on the horizontal axis. Next a box is drawn in the space above the horizontal axis in such a way that the left end of the box aligns with the first quartile of our data set and the right end of the box aligns with the third quartile. After that the box is divided into two parts by a vertical line that aligns with the median. Next a line that is a whisker is extended from the left end of the box to a point that aligns with x0 the smallest measurement in our data set and last but not the least another line that is the other whisker is extended from the right end of the box to a point that aligns with the largest measurement in the data set. So in this manner we get this very interesting plot a box and two whiskers. Let me explain this point to you with the help of an example. Suppose that we have data regarding the downtime in hours recorded for 30 machines which are owned by a large manufacturing company and it is known that the period of time covered was the same for all machines. The data regarding the downtime of the 30 machines is 4, 6, 1, 8, 1, 4 and so on. In order to construct the box and whisker plot we need to locate the smallest and the largest observations in our data set and these values are 1 and 13 respectively. Also we need to compute the first quartile, the median and the third quartile and for this particular data set these values come out to be 4, 5 and 8.25. As such we obtain 
a box and whisker plot which you now see on the screen. Students, ye jo tino quartiles hain, Q1, Q3 or X tilde, ye maine kis tarah compute kiye hain? Aapko yaad hoga ke jab main aapke saath quartiles ki discussion kar rahi thi, I gave to you in detail the formulae that are valid in the case of the frequency distribution of a continuous variable. Lekin maine bohat zyada detail mein aapke saath ye point discuss nahi kiya tha ke how you would find the quartiles in case of raw data. But I hope that you have already studied quite a bit of material from your own textbook and from other books and you do have an idea as to how to compute the quartiles in the case of raw data. In this particular example, as you now see on the screen, the first quartile is the 30 plus 1 over 4th, that is the 7.75th ordered measurement and it comes out to be equal to 4. Similarly, the median is the 30 plus 1 by 2th, that is 15.5th measurement and that comes out to be equal to 5. And in a similar way, the third quartile is 3 times 30 plus 1 by 4th, that is the 23.25th ordered measurement and that comes out to be equal to 8.25. Students, the most important question is ke is box and whisker plot ko hum interpret kis tra karenge? The point to understand is that this interesting and simple diagram gives us quite a lot of information. It gives us information regarding the spread, the location of concentration of the data values and the shape of your distribution. In the example that we have just considered, the box and whisker plot reveals that 50% of the measurements are falling between 4 and 8.25. Also, the box and whisker plot indicates clearly that the median is 5 and the range is 12. And the most important point is, as regards the skewness of the distribution, that since the median line is closer to the left end of the box, hence the data are skewed to the right. Median line ke baare mein, jo maine aap se abhi kaha, usko khas taur par note ki je. I said that if the median line is closer to the left end of the box, it means that the data is skewed to the right. Isi tara, if the median line is closer to the right end of the box, the distribution will be skewed to the left. And of course, for a perfectly symmetrical distribution, the median line will be neither closer to the left nor closer to the right and it will be in the exact center of the box. So, ye to hua ek point ke aap achhi tarah se note kare ke us box ke andar median line is it closer to the left, is it closer to the right or is it exactly in the middle of the box. Dusra equally important point ye hai ke aap uske whiskers jo hai unko ghor se dekhe aur note kare whether the left whisker is exactly equal to the right one or is it that one of them is shorter than the other one. Or ek bada interesting relationship hai between 
द पॉइंट के कौन सा विस्कर छोटा है और कौन सा लंबा एंड द पॉइंट के मीडियन लाइन बॉक्स के लेफ्ट साइड के क्लोजर है या राइट साइड के सो एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन फॉर अ नेगेटिवली स्क्यूड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन द मीडियन लाइन इज क्लोजर टू द राइट एंड ऑफ द बॉक्स एंड द विस्कर टू द राइट is shorter than the whisker to the left on the other hand for a right skewed distribution the median line is closer to the left end of the box and the whisker to the left is shorter than the whisker to the right let us consolidate all these ideas by going back to the example of the 10 universities as you will recall the annual costs incurred on tuition fee room and board for the 10 universities were available and the five number summary of this data set came out to be x not equal to 13.0 q1 14.9 x tilde 15.3 and so on so as you now see on the screen the box and whisker plot for this particular data set is such that the median line is closer to the left end of the box and the left whisker is much shorter than the one on the right so is box and whisker plot say हम क्या अखज करेंगे अकॉर्डिंग टू द रूल्स दैट आई कन्वे टू यू अ शॉर्ट वाइल अगो इट इज ऑब्वियस फ्रॉम दिस बॉक्स एंड विस्क प्लॉट दैट द डेटा ऑफ द एनुअल कास्ट ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ दिस यूनिवर्सिटीज इज पॉजिटिवली स्क्यूड मैं आपको इनक्रेज करूंगी कि अगर चे दिस इज अ वेरी स्मॉल डेटा सेट आप इसका फ्रीक्वेंसी पॉलीगॉन या इसकी फ्रीक्वेंसी कर्व ड्रॉ करने की कोशिश करें और देखें कि डज इट लुक लाइक अ पॉजिटिवली स्क्यूड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एज इंडिकेटेड बाय द बॉक्स एंड विस्क प्लॉट सो इस सारी डिस्कशन का जिस्ट ये है कि मीडियन लाइन जिस साइड की तरफ होगी स्क्यूनेस की डायरेक्शन उसके ऑपोजिट होगी और दूसरा पॉइंट ये कि जिस साइड का विस्कर ज़्यादा लंबा होगा स्क्यूनेस की डायरेक्शन उसी साइड की होगी स्टूडेंट्स द बॉक्स एंड विस्कर प्लॉट कम्स अंडर द रेल्म ऑफ एक्सप्लोरेटरी डेटा एनालिसिस और ई एज इट इज़ कॉल्ड एंड दिस इज अ रेलेटिवली न्यू एरिया इन स्टेटिस्टिक्स द डायग्राम्स दैट यू विल नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन will show a comparison between the box and whisker plot and the more traditional method of drawing the frequency curve the first diagram shows the situation where our distribution is absolutely symmetric and as you see in this case the box and whisker plot is also absolutely symmetric when i say symmetric i mean that if you place a mirror vertically in the center of the box and whisker plot you find that the left side of the plot is the mirror image of the right side the lower diagram on the screen shows the situation of the rectangular distribution which is the one again in which the left side is the mirror image of the right side although the rectangular distribution is not encountered as frequently as the hump shaped distribution but this is also a very useful distribution to describe the concept of absolute symmetry students 
जैसा कि मैं आपसे पहले कह चुकी हूँ इट इज़ वेरी अनलाइकली दैट इन अ रियल लाइफ सिचुएशन यू विल कलेक्ट डेटा हुज डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन विल बी एब्सोलूटली सिमेट्रिकल बट इन मेनी सिचुएशंस वी डू गेट डेटा विच इज अप्रॉक्सीमेटली सिमेट्रिकल एंड बॉक्स एंड विस्क प्लॉट जो है दैट विल इनेबल यू टू जज दैट वेरी इजिली अगर आपकी मीडियन लाइन इट इज ऑलमोस्ट इन द मिडल ऑफ द बॉक्स एंड द लेफ्ट विस्कर इज ऑलमोस्ट एज लॉन्ग एज द राइट वन यू कैन इमीजिएटली से दैट दिस पर्टिकुलर डेटा सेट इज अप्रॉक्सीमेटली सिमेट्रिकल एज स्टेटेड अर्लियर इन केस ऑफ द नेगेटिवली स्क्यूड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन द मीडियन लाइन इज क्लोजर टू द राइट एंड ऑफ द बॉक्स एंड the right whisker is shorter in length than the left one on the other hand in case of a positively skewed distribution the median line is closer to the left end of the box and the left whisker is shorter in length than the right one positively skewed distribution ko hum is tarah se bhi explain kar sakte hain ki hum kahein के द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ द डेटा पॉइंट्स इज टूवर्ड्स द लो एंड ऑफ द स्केल इसी तरह इसके ऑपोजिट लेफ्ट स्क्यू डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के लिए हम कहेंगे दैट द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ द डेटा पॉइंट्स इज टूवर्ड्स द अपर एंड ऑफ द स्केल यूनिवर्सिटीज वाले एग्जाम्पल में कुछ इसी तरह की सिचुएशन थी कि अप्रॉक्सीमेटली 75% percent of the values were concentrated on the lower end of the scale of the annual costs of the students and the remaining approximately 25% percent were dispersed along the long right whisker of the box and whisker plot students i have discussed with you the concept of the five number summary and the box and whisker plot in a lot of detail i hope that you will study these concepts in depth and practice with a lot of questions the next concept that i would like to pick up now is the pearson's coefficient of skewness is silsile mein sabse pehla point ye note kare ki we may think that by providing information regarding the center and the spread of the distribution that is by computing the mean and the standard deviation we have done a perfectly adequate description of the data but in reality two distributions who have exactly the same mean and exactly the same standard deviation they may be quite dissimilar let me explain this point to you with the help of an example suppose that we have data regarding the age of onset of nervous asthma in children and we have this information regarding two categories of children children of manual workers and children of non manual workers as you see on the screen the data regarding the children of manual workers has frequencies 3 9 18 18 9 and 3 corresponding to the age groups 0 to 2 3 to 5 6 to 8 9 to 11 12 to 14 and 15 to 17 years on the other hand the frequencies for the children of the non manual workers are 3 12 9 27 6 3 6 and 3. although the total frequency is 60 for both distributions i hope that you realize that the distributions are quite dissimilar aapne dekha ke total frequency dono data sets ke liye 60 hai lekin i hope you realize by looking at those frequencies that the two distributions are quite dissimilar 
अगर हम मीन और स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन कंप्यूट करना चाहें देन वी विल डू ऑल दोज कैलकुलेशन विच आई कन्वे टू यू अर्लियर एंड एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द कैलकुलेशन फॉर द चिल्ड्रन ऑफ मैनुअल वर्कर्स एंड दोज फॉर द चिल्ड्रन ऑफ नॉन मैनुअल वर्कर्स प्रोवाइड ऑल द सम्स दैट वी रिक्वायर इन ऑर्डर टू सब्सिट्यूट इन द फॉर्मूलाए ऑफ द मीन एंड द स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन द इंटरेस्टिंग पॉइंट इज दैट फॉर बोथ ऑफ दीज डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन द मीन एज comes out to be 8.5 years and the standard deviation 3.61 years lekin jaisa ki maine pehle kaha tha the shape of the two distributions will be quite different because the pattern of the frequencies for the two categories of children was quite different so as you now see on the screen the distribution for the children of the manual workers is absolutely symmetric whereas the distribution for the children of non manual workers is quite different from symmetry so i hope that this point is clear that two distributions which are quite different with regard to skewness they can have exactly the same arithmetic mean and the same standard deviation and yet be different in terms of skewness the pearson's coefficient of skewness is one method of measuring the skewness present in a data set and as you now see on the screen the pearson's coefficient is given by mean minus mode over standard deviation and if we apply the empirical relation between the mean median and the mode the pearson's coefficient of skewness becomes 3 times the mean minus median divided by the standard deviation as indicated earlier in case of a positively skewed distribution the mean is greater than the median and hence the pearson's coefficient will come out to be positive in the case of a negatively skewed distribution the median is greater than the mean and the pearson's coefficient comes out to be a negative quantity and in case of an absolutely symmetric distribution students you already know that the mean and the median coincide and hence the pearson's coefficient will be exactly equal to 0 let us apply this concept to the example that we just considered as you now see on the screen for the children of the manual workers the mean and median both are equal to 8.50 and hence the pearson's coefficient is exactly 0 whereas for the children of the non manual workers the mean is equal to 8.50 and the median is 9.16 and hence the pearson's coefficient comes out to be minus 0.55 the negative answer in the case of children of non manual workers indicates that the distribution for that category of children is negatively skewed and i would like to encourage you students to look again at the frequency polygons of the two categories of children and to compare the results that you just obtained with what you see in that graph students in today's lecture we discussed various ways of ascertaining the skewness in our data set and the last thing that i discussed is the pearson's coefficient of skewness next time i will begin with another very interesting measure and that is called the bowley's coefficient of skewness in the meantime i hope that you will enjoy 
revising and practicing the various concepts that you learned today. Until next time, Allah Hafiz.